The Hyperspace, podcasting in the 25th century presents Welcome in, Podcast Padawans, to the Ahsoka Archives, our discussion and review of the Disney Plus series, Star Wars Ahsoka. And before we get started, I'd like to tell you, my name is Jared. Hey, my name is Matt. I'm Brian. I'm Lindsay. Gang, we uh, we have a lot to talk about on this show. Um, we haven't convened in a couple of weeks, so we have two episodes to talk about. And I I know I know it's going to be a great temptation just to skip to the end of episode four and immediately start talking about what's going on, but. You know, I think episode three uh, was a was a very solid episode, and there's 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 meat on the bone there. So, so I have I to tell you, watching episode four today, yeah. I actually struggled to remember what episode three was like because my brain was going so fast forward into episode five. I'm like, I I, I don't even remember episode three. I had to go back and watch episode three. Okay, so well, already, all right. So, so we're gonna we're gonna get started here. Where, well, I mean, where would you like to begin, Matt? Are you going to put out the spoiler alerts? Oh, crap. Oops. Oh, wow. my God. Imagine how many lives you almost ruined. I know. I got oh, the, yes. the spoiler Walkman is back. I'm going to give it another shot. I, I just, we're not videoing this, but I wanted to show everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm going to fast forward to the appropriate part. Okay. That sounds about right. And here we go. Yes, 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 yes. That's not it. Is that Grogu? <laughs> it could very well be, depending on what I do in post. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, man. Okay. Well, let's try something else. Um, and. Okay. There's our spoiler red alert. Yes. For episodes three and four of Ahsoka, we're going to be spoiling the entire the entire plot Mm. and talking about it, dissecting it. And we're going to start with episode three. Nice. The uh, title of episode three is time to fly part three time to fly. And uh, okay. Kick us off. I still think that I'm going to hold true to what I said last episode was that this show feels real star Wars to me. It, It has got a great star Wars feel. I don't think the pacing has improved much. Um, but I'm okay with it because I like the story. And uh, I think out of all the shows so far, Andor might be on par with it. The action sequences in this show, Ahsoka, so far are probably my favorite action sequences since I might say Rogue One. This is a fun show to watch. I'm I'm really enjoying the show immensely. I feel like they um, had, I know, I know it was an animated show, so I feel like they have a lot to try to keep with the tone of the action, you know, that probably was a lot faster, more, you could do anything because it was animated, you literally had no limits. So mm-hmm. I feel like it feels like they're doing things like what we'll talk about on this episode with the space, spacewalk. Like, I feel like that's something that mm. feels like it came out of a cartoon, but they made it seem really good and realistic. Well, realistic. Well, uh, it's funny that you say that, Lindsay, because uh, they did do that in Clone Wars. Oh, hey, look at that. A couple of times they did spacewalks. So, Will I uh, say we fight spacewalks? Uh, actually, I think so, yes. Because oh. that's one of the first things I thought of when, when she did that. I was like, this is like something out of Clone Wars. And, yeah. you know, it's uh, and it's something that I think her and Anakin did um, going out into space and, and fighting uh, during the Clone Wars. Uh, but, yeah, you're absolutely spot on there um i was a little and, towards the end but yeah yeah uh and i think uh me and Lindsay, we don't talk about the show at work but when Definitely we don't do, do that we um <laughs> we talked about <laughs> look at matt um <laughs> we talked about how uh how, how long does it take ahsoka to get her head tails <laughs> Like in, in those little uh, yeah. like sacks that she has uh-huh. to put them in, just to dehydrate them and and off and off. Like you know, you're yeah. like 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 do they get turned inside out when she takes them off? You know, like <laughs> you have to put it back. It's a good yeah. point. 
I, it's something I want to mention about the I I've, I'm coming to really enjoy Ahsoka's ship. It, it's starting to have a personality to me, but you got to rem- they they fight basically on their dining room table. <laughs> their feet all over the table. <laughs> I know yeah. the whole training oh, sequence, no. and then the next scene, the, the <laughs> table rises oh, up out of the God, floor. You're so hey, right. Is somebody Gross. gonna wipe that off? <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, did, I didn't. Did I didn't even notice- think about that in that closet where she has all the gear and stuff where she got the helmet for Sabine during that training sequence that looks like they robbed general Grievous's lair. Yes. With all the lightsabers in there, there was like eight or 10 of them just hanging there on the wall. Hmm. Yeah. She has lightsabers in that little uh, locker. Yeah. Um, Why does she have those in there? Do you guys know why? Maybe she's taking up Grievous's hobby. I I mean, she's she's like collected at the end of rebels, not to give anything away. She literally took her sabers and, left them at a wreckage to that was like, the end of the clone wars oh, clone yeah. wars i'm sorry to steer uh you know the empire invader off her trail so she's been collecting and rebuilding lightsabers maybe it's a hobby she just builds oh, okay. but uh, i tell possible. you speaking of ahsoka um i still think after watching these recent two episodes that i'm waiting for her to wake up a little more um i'm still not She's she's kind of the weakest link so far, it, and it's not a it's not a real weak link. But if there is a weak link so far, it's still her for me. And you know, I get that she's in her. I guess she's in her forties. She's a combat veteran. She's been through a lot. But you know, it's funny. The character every time she's on screen, she folds her arms and she goes to sit. She reminds me of an old person because it's always that like that <laughs> the old starts, person. She starts and she's like the slow like ugh, leans into the chair. I, I think- I think she's really, she takes like really measured, deliberate movements. And I think that I like this take, but I feel like the problem for me, it's not her for me. Because I feel like she's doing everything she can do with this. This is obviously scripted. She doesn't have any line. Right. You know what I mean? Like she right, right. can do so much. I feel like the writing is lacking good scenes for her too. Like scenes where she's by herself, where she's like contemplating or doing something else or having like, just stuff that's more about her. It's very about Sabine, I feel like. And nothing really mm-hmm. feels like it's about what she's going through. And we're that's not a great in point. touch with what she's We're going halfway through. through the season now. Eight episodes in the season, correct? Mm-hmm. We're halfway through, and I agree with you 100%. She has not had a good quality building, character building scene yet in four episodes. Halfway through the yeah. season. I agree with you well, 100%. I think, I think some of that may be that they, they don't think it's necessarily, well, necessary. Because necessary. <laughs> the, I know, right? That it's just not necessary to do that because I think they're going on the assumption that most people know who Ahsoka is. And although they're writing that, although, yeah, there are people that are new to this. Yes. Like, so it's like about her. It's still like any, like, and or once you find out who Andor is and you know who he is and you're watching it, he's still every episode something happens to him mm-hmm. or, yeah, like he does something yep. like. I don't know. I just but that agree. show would die on the vine if you if you didn't do that. I think. Well, I guess so. I, You're but right. I think we're about to. You know, not. To, I, I can't speculate. I mean, I can speculate, but <laughs> I think we're about to go into some very Ahsoka heavy. I episodes can't freaking coming wait. up. I agree. Um, I, I'm sure. But, but I'll tell you. I'll tell you this real quick. It's a shame. It's it's killing me to know that obviously Ray Stevenson is no longer with us. Because oh. his character, Balin, is my absolute favorite of the entire show so far. And it, it really, really upsets me to think that they had they probably had a, a great arc planned for him over X amount of series, which it can't obviously happen now. And I, I'm curious to see what they do with it. But he is, by far and away, the best part of this show for me. Every time he's on screen, he commands that, that scene. He is just yeah. amazing in everything he does. He steals every scene he's in. He just takes it. Him and his apprentice's costumes are sick too. Like, yeah, looks so good. Mm-hmm. The costuming in this is so much better than the costuming in, say, Kenobi. Oh, yeah, sp- yeah. Speaking of Kenobi, I have thought about that for way later. Oh at shoot! The, at the very okay. end of the whole thing. Oh, uh, because you yeah. said we don't want to jump. We don't want to jump to the. Okay, okay. Jared, why don't you steer us through episode three here? Or uh, okay, so the the broad strokes of episode three is, um. The uh, we we actually have our friend from Andor, uh, Mon Mothma, show up. Um, uh, oh, 
which kind of kind of answered my speculative question about why aren't they notifying the new republic of what's going on which yeah and you, yeah you notice <laughs> that that leia is not present in that little yeah. but again i i think at some point you just have to say well you know han and luke and leia maybe not so much they're, luke they're but they can't be in every single little meeting mm-hmm. but um I, I think, think one of those is a, one of those people in that scene. One of those senators is an imperial. At least one, if not more, are imperial sympathizers. Mm, I have no doubts, especially with the one echoing what that guy had said back on Karelia. I'm like, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, you're well, one of them, and there's probably another one of you that is. Makes I think mm-hmm. this this scene is a kind of a microcosm of what's the problem with the New Republic is, and you see it in Mon Mothma's face. In that she, I think Mon Mothma, she, she realizes she's just kind of replaced one, one government for another. One bureaucracy for the next. With the same problems in place because she, she actually looks a little embarrassed and uncomfortable when that that Senator (laughs) is, is trying to give Hera the business Mm -hmm. and she's just like, uh, yeah and and she it's it's like you can see on her face she's just like well you know hair is probably going to go off and do this anyway so i okay what whatever and you know we've we've got one guy uh the asian man who is that she hair is warned about him before she goes into the room like hey senator so-and-so is in there and and so you're like oh boy and he goes in and then and of course he's you know, he's sort of very anti what he's like, you, you, you we're just not going to give you a bunch of X wings to go off and look for Ezra Bridger. And, mm-hmm. um, and then of course the other two people who are there, they don't even say anything. They're just like, yes, yes. And then my mom looks embarrassed. So yeah, you think Leia's out getting trained by Luke at this it's, time? It's possible. It's like possible. Sorry. That, just no, no, no. That's, that's, that's a good. I mean, we've uh, we've learned that that was actually something that was happening at this time. Mm-hmm. So I think this is the first time we see uh, Harris' son in live action with his green hair, obviously inherited from his mom's green skin. I know. <laughs> I now, he, in fairness, it's consistent with how he looked in Rebels because he was a little kid with a mm-hmm. shock of green hair and no, no no suggestion whatsoever that he's anything but a human well Jared, even though are you and are his... you an alien speciologist you don't know what people's <laughs> well, maybe, listen maybe. listen when you cross him the tentacle comes in a different spot for the cross oh breed, so. <laughs> the cross like oh <laughs> well well so i i Twi- think lumen? Um, twi lumens twi 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 i don't know yeah. but uh, obviously his, his dad his dad is Kanan, who was mm-hmm. uh, a Jedi from Rebels, who was deceased. So m- maybe uh, Jason, uh, I'm sure it may come into it sometime that he needs to be trained. Uh, yeah, there's but, definitely a hint uh, there. I-, I would say so. And now, I mean, you know, Luke's building is maybe he's one of the kids who gets killed by Kylo Ren later. Oh, on. God. <laughs> They're like, oh, hey, no. Luke, here's Luke's uh, new academy that, uh, gets destroyed but um hey jared before i'm sorry before i forget you kind of spark something in my brain here now oh crap okay. i think star wars has a jedi problem oh. uh, and i say that in the sense that i think they feel that the audience always has to have a hero associated with the force and andor has proven as a show that you don't need to follow the force to have a great show in star wars but i still feel that the whole Sabine Wren force angle is a bit forced. And I'm not I'm not bought in completely that it was a necessary plot move to try to shoehorn her into the force. Because in Rebels, Sabine Wren alone was an amazingly badass character. She was incredibly capable. She was one of the most capable combatants. And she was a force to be reckoned with without the force. Yeah, and you got um, a good glimpse of that too, dear well, later on. Finally, by the gonna, way. Well, I was just gonna I was just gonna say I don't know that they are trying to say that she has the force. Everything I've seen so far is well, showing that she doesn't. Yeah. Like I'm, has nothing. Nothing. Didn't didn't we 
was was the her failure to move the cup was that in episode three yes, yes. Mm-hmm. right after okay. her training session or which you know i'm i think is a refreshing change um that's what i mean yeah, now, like, i don't know if they're going it, now way, I, I, I think it's a little ambiguous what happens in episode four where she throws her hand up at shin and shin sort of like does that and she's like you don't have any powers. That felt like a total fake faint from Sabine to me because that that apprentice thinks she's got a lightsaber. She's an apprentice, so she's fighting her that way, and then she, Sabine fakes her out and then hits her with like, the rockets and on purpose, yeah. like she fakes I, her I, out on purpose. But wasn't there? I thought there was a for, or like a force push noise that they kind of. I didn't hear. Anything. I gotta watch. There it again. was a sound. Watch. Yeah, there was a sound there that they oh, used. So I thought it was I like just that. like all her might could barely like move her. Yeah, her, could... like like a little baby slap almost. But I'm like, I, but yeah. I have to watch again because I, I, I like I like the idea that it was a faint better than it was like just a little weak part of the force. Yeah, yeah. So, and I almost yeah. wonder if Shin turned her face because she thought she saw something. That's what coming. I thought happened. Yeah, I gotta watch again. So. But. I, you know, I, to your point, Matt, I, you know, I, I agree. I mean, uh, but, um, and I, I kind of hope Sabine doesn't, uh, go that way. Um, but I, you know, as far as the, uh, having a Jedi problem, I, I think at this point and now at this point in the timeline, which is, you know, five or six years, six, seven years after return of the Jedi, I'm okay with having some Jedi around or Jedi training people. Now, where I have a problem with it was, you know, and I guess it falls into this show is that, you know, during the original trilogy, you were led to believe, you know, you had the Yoda, Obi-Wan and Luke, and that was basically it. But of course, with these other series that have come out, we find, you know, whether it was, you know, Kanan was running around just a few years before a new hope um and that still fits in with the uh, new hope though and well, yeah. both of those because you yeah, assume that they're both gone well yeah and the, and of course the cal kestis for the video games but um he's gonna die i bet he's gonna die <laughs> it's possible um but you know i think uh i think at this point in time and and like what is balin obviously balin was a jedi who walked away or maybe he he survived the purge and decided he was going to change sides. I still think it's because he had a daughter and he, he bailed because of it. I think that's his daughter. That's his daughter. Okay. But you know, I think in this point in the timeline, it's, it's okay. It doesn't bother me. Um, And plus the story we're telling, you know, we all know Ahsoka's past and we know that, and it, it makes sense for her to kind of be where she is now. Um, that's not really something I have to buy into because I've been watching Ahsoka since like 2008. So uh, I know, I know where she's been and, you know, where she was during the original trilogy, which we'll get to that at the end of this episode. And so, I mean, I'm fine, but I don't like, I just don't want Sabine to all of a sudden have this, have the force. Yeah. And I like the idea of Ahsoka having like this not associated with luke because luke's only looking for force sensitives to train like she has this other group of people that she's training that aren't necessarily able to use the force but she doesn't care she's still training them to like you know be in tune with it or whatever i saw someone reference a chirrut from rogue one yes like he wasn't a jedi but he he wasn't strong enough in force but he could feel it enough to like yeah do a little something and i feel Mm -hmm. like hopefully maybe she's more along that line you know, she's just selfish. You know, she's getting this big opportunity, and there's a kid with a broom <laughs> at some horse planet where Luke doesn't even care. And so horse he gets planet. all the cho- all the ch- all the chances. Wait, now, Matt, I gotta. I-, I thought about you during this scene where they have they're talking at the table, right. Ahsoka and Sabine, right? And it made me think of you because one thing I know about you from you know seeing being with you throughout the prequel era and everything Mm -hmm. um you you know you're like in the original trilogy anybody had a chance to use the force if you trained and you you worked hard then you could access the force 
And then the midi chlorians came along and you're like, well, that just blows all that out of the water. But I think they have a conversation that sort of maybe reverses that a little bit. It's true. They did have that conversation. Side steps yeah. it a little but bit. But there are like, for example, all of us have the ability. We could all go to a court in a park and play a game of basketball. Now, would we be good at it? Debatable. Would some of us be better at it than others? Probably. But we could all, if we chose to, go and play a game of basketball. With the forest now, it seems like, and and Ahsoka makes a note, yes, talent and innate ability is a factor, which is would explain the, the Skywalkers and maybe Yoda and Obi-Wan. But uh, I think they brought it back down to Earth a little bit. They re-retconned it? Almost. <laughs> but but without saying that, okay, well, midi chlorians don't matter. Because obviously, if you're born with that kind of innate talent, obviously that does matter. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but I don't know. I just thought it was something interesting. I, to I agree with you. It, it is nice to think that the Force has a little more mystical and, you know, uh, fantastical properties and just coming down to science. But, um, but that was a nice conversation they had, by the way, that was a good moment between those two. I like mm -hmm. the whole training sequence and I like the heart to heart they had. And I, I actually, I, I know I kind of critiqued it earlier on in, in our last episode, but I I'm coming around to their relationship a little more and I like their scenes together. And I think by the end of episode four, we got a, a very well working dynamic between the two. So was, was it working well? Well, was it working well, or did they do the exact opposite of what they should have done? Uh, uh well, let me put this. That's way. a good point. Let me put this way. I'm just saying they, they didn't. Listen they might to not follow their own rules, Yang. but I think their relationship is is becoming no, a I good agree. close I one. Agree with, I yeah, agree. Yeah, yeah. But it's, yeah, it's, no, that's it's becoming more be believable. I think. Yeah, but um, um, so but they 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 know that um that Morgan has the map, and we saw at the end of episode two the giant starship that she's building. Mm -hmm. um, which is very reminiscent of one of the Jedi hyperspace rings that we saw in the prequels. Mm -hmm. It's just on a much larger scale. Um, what could it bring back? Maybe a star destroyer. Um, we'll see. Cause I think that's what Th that you think they built the ring to, to take a star destroyer. Mm. I think it's to bring this, this the star destroyer home. I it's about that because Thrawn disappeared in a star destroyer. Right. So I think they're bringing a star, but anyway, we'll get to that later. But uh, Ahsoka and Sabine set off to uh, find out what's happening at this planet. We do have a nice little dog fight with yeah. a fantastic, um, and, and which has a lot like of great prequel top notes and 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 really a mix of good prequel and original trilogy in that dog fight. Yeah, it was really good. Good noises, good sound effects. Love the the lasers coming out of the enemy. Uh, I like the uh, the whole B seventeen like rear gunner, you know, sort yeah. of like. Mm -hmm. That was kind of cool. And, and all uh, the weapons had some like just heavy sound to them. A, a yeah. quality that wasn't quite as light as some of the other laser blast sounds mm -hmm. we've heard in the yeah. past. Um, you know, it's interesting the laser maybe this is normal and I've never noticed it before. The laser blast, like they like unlike light and what light does, they don't keep going. They like are aiming for a target and they like blow up. Or is that like a deflector shield that's blowing them up? I, well, I think if they sometimes you're seeing an impact on a shield. Yeah, that's what uh, okay. That's what I was wondering because I'm like they yeah. just hit nothing and and I'm I, and I don't they, remember they kind of pop. I don't remember shields being such a big thing in Star Wars. Is that dumb? Oh it's yeah, like, it's it's yeah they they are like the, in even the in a New Hope, even in yeah. a New Hope. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I remember that Han Solo is talking about the rear deflector shields. Yeah, uh, I don't remember and, this at all. Yeah, I gold leaders like turn your deflectors on double front. Yeah, so they're yeah. Seeing it. it's always been you guys, a big deal. You guys, you guys can call that up. Um, okay, <laughs> it was a great dogfight, and um, we I like I like Merrick, Merrick. Uh, no, as you oh, wish. oh. Uh, he, as you wish. He's a very you know that guy. Very, uh, <laughs> very cool, maybe. But we um, can talk about him a little more later. But yeah. I liked how uh, I liked how Morgan opened up the uh, the ring turbo lasers on uh, on Ahsoka's ship and uh, and paralyzed it 
and I thought it was yeah. a great. I mean, first off, the visuals again. We we mentioned it last episode, but the visuals are crazy good in this show. Yeah. And watching that ship spiral past the the ring, the Eye of Scion towards the planet was just it's really amazing to watch. It just blows me away that I'm watching this on my TV. The debris is sort of in orbit around the ship. Yeah. So, and uh, let's talk about. Uh, Wasn't there a shot well, like that in Last Jedi? Where the debris. I don't remember that. I don't know what movie ship. you're talking about. What movie is I that? Know. That that um, one that we don't like. Um, <laughs> who Yang? Right? That's who Wang? Who Yang? Who Yang? Who Yang? He. I, I remember watching episode three and thinking, "This guy's awesome. He's like one of my favorites," because he had a lot of sort of, you know, snarky asides in this. Yes. Just like, you know, uh, will you? You know, will you please stop? Oh no! You know, sort of like three PO, but way cooler. Yeah, you know, he he blinks too. By the way, yes, he does. Yeah, which is is strange, but reminds me you know. of a uh, oh my god, what's her name from Spaceballs? Oh yeah, a dot dot matrix. Dot, dot, matrix. dot, <laughs> dot. Yes. Good call. I watched yeah. that recently. Man, that's <laughs> yeah. He does even his shape of his head mm-hmm. is sort of similar. Yeah, that's funny. Wow. Isn't that a Macquarie concept? His shape like for i think I looked, so i looked it up i looked because i thought it was and i couldn't find it but i'm sure okay. it is it has to be it has to be it's really um, cool looking though he is he's very uh, retro like what you'd see yeah. somebody draw in the yeah. 70s like, well yeah because he's you know thousands of years old so i mean he, he looks like an old like a something from a different era mm-hmm. so in, you know, in, um, in that regard in that regard good on him for putting some cool new looks which are actually retro old looks into Star Wars and not going with like the, the tried and true. Like you're right. He feels like he's from a different time. Yes. Yeah. So it's kind of cool. It, it really bridges a lot of different weird tech gaps in, in the show. I like it. And, and I've noticed something about this show. I feel like watching it. It's like I was when I was a kid and I watched the new hope empire Jedi. And, you know, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, it feels like that again with this, whereas some of the other stuff doesn't feel that way. But this kind of the does Vespas weren't me. doing it for you in Book of Boba Fett. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. That's what I said. This very this feels very core Star Wars to me. Very yeah, right yeah. right in the DNA and, line. Yeah, and like you said, I do appreciate Andor for what it's doing differently. Um, again, classic Coca Cola, classic Coke. Right. Uh, so while we're talking about that real quick, I have the um, the Return of the Jedi sketchbook nice. oh, from nineteen eighty. Got to be something good in here. Um, that's oh, Balin's shuttle nice. right there. Oh yes, nice. <laughs> good. That's dick, his. Man. That's his shuttle. You, what are you showing to no one, Jared? No <laughs> one what? Can, can you this? not see it? No, I mean they're not recording this for the. Oh, I know. I was just showing you guys. This is audio braille. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Braille. Uh, Describe page, it in detail, what page is that on, please? Jared? <laughs> yeah, page 73 of the Return of the Jedi sketchbook. Uh, in 1982, uh, Balin's shuttle, which looks like an Imperial shuttle with kind of a ball shaped cockpit, mm-hmm. uh, was, was created for Return of the Jedi. And it's finally seeing the light of day in this show. Cool. Which is kind of cool. Um, uh, but ah- Ahsoka's ship, uh, they have to put down. On the planet. Well, the, of course, we have the space fight with uh, Soka on the wing. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. The, You're right. The, yeah. sp- the spacewalk. That was uh, great. Well, we we kind of talked about that, but that was fun. It that, was great. It, I like when she was yeah. like floating out there and she was like, now come and get me. Like, yeah, I know. She's like, uh, yeah. can, can you come and get me? That was, see, that was funny. That was a, a line that actually made me laugh. Like, hey, uh, yeah, come and get me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, And then we get to uh the atmosphere and a lot of crazy crap starts to happen the uh the purgles were uh a surprise for me there'll be whales here because i thought wow they're really doing this early like episode three and um we've got the purgles uh floating around in the atmosphere which were this obviously the first time we've seen them in live action sort of I mean, we saw them in the Mandalorian uh, in hyperspace, but they were just like shadows. But uh, these things were very large, and uh, I thought they were really cool looking. And it makes sense that they're at this planet because this is the 
the point of jump. Yes. To go to the yeah. next galaxy. So it makes sense that they're hanging out here. And, you know, I didn't know how I felt about the Purgles initially when I was watching Rebels. But for me, I guess it, it kind of falls along with the wildlife of the Star Wars galaxy. I mean, you've are they got... Gonna... Sorry. No, go ahead. I was going to say, are they going to catch a ride on these whales, do you think? Yeah, um, it's possible. I, well, I think they've already... Most of them have already caught their ride there with the, the eye of Sion. But not Ahsoka. But, and... Well, we'll get That's to true. that. Or we'll, she's where yeah. she's at. Yeah, where she's at. I the, guess um, she could get there. But, I mean, I look, know. you know, in a in a universe of force buffaloes and, you know, <laughs> space whales. <laughs> nothing is, was saying, sorry. Nothing's out That's, of the ordinary yeah, here. You know, giant uh, slugs that live inside asteroids. You know. And the Purgles were cool. They were, they were fun to yeah. watch. And I thought, well, man, somebody's going to get swallowed or smashed or something <laughs> because these things are gigantic. Um, but they, they put down on this planet and, um, you know, they're making repairs and that kind of leads us into episode four, which is the title of which is fallen Jedi. How appropriate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What, who, who, who could we be talking about? Because there's so many questions here. Is this a, a, a philosophical or actual a literal. term? A literal <laughs> yeah. term. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it fell off the get... cliff. Oh, you notice gosh. that uh, they had a different director for that episode. Did they? For, yeah. For... Peter Ramsey. Oh, interesting. Was, and they three? had Steph Green for the other ones. Yeah. Steph yeah. Green. She's done a couple of these and she yeah. did some uh, book, book of Boba Fett's. Some of the better ones, I should say. Yeah. Um, Robert Rodriguez directed all the crappy ones in Book of Boba Fett. Yeah, which he did. Terrible blows job. my mind. Uh, oh, but man. um, uh, so yeah. Before we get too far into the all the good stuff in this episode, I mean, this is good too. But I just want to say that this planet that they're on, the cinematography of the way they shot it for this episode, it looks so good. I just wanted to live in those red trees. It looks so. Yeah. You know, good. I think Halloween planet when I see it. Well, hold on. <laughs> did anybody is... play um, Star Wars Galaxies? No. Which is the open world, like, uh, it was back multi- in the massive like, multiplayer, massive multiplayer back in like the early 2000s. So I played it and there was, I mean, it was, it was wonky at best, but it was still a cool <laughs> game. But there was one planet that had all red fauna like this. And it was where the witches of, uh, Dathomir, Dathomir lived. And it's Dathomir. Oh. That's what they, that's how, and it looks almost identical to how they put it in the game. So, and it's by no coincidence that that's where Morgan, I think, Mm -hmm. is there. So, and it's a, it's a weird nexus of the force for where the Purgles are and what it can do in the hyperspace lane. So it was Mm -hmm. very cool because I'm, that's the first thing I thought about. I was like, I, I've walked through this planet and there are Rancors (laughs) on that planet too. Oh yeah, Uh, that's true. So we might see a Rancor, but um, I thought it was pretty cool to see. And you're right. It looks amazing. Live action. Sorry. Anyway. No. So we we it just picks up basically right where we left off. Uh, they're they're fixing uh, the ship, um, and um, Balin is like, okay, here's where they are. Okay, Morgan's like, okay, go get them, take care of them, and we have a good Hera scene early on. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And let me tell you, I man, these shots of the Rebel fleet. Uh, especially there was one in episode three where you got the A-wings flying through the, all the big ships. And then we get another beauty shot of just the fleet, all those great original trilogy ships still out there floating around. Um, yeah, that's, uh, you're getting, you're getting a lot of points from me very easily doing (laughs) that stuff. Yes. Um, because the nostalgia is strong. (laughs) Yeah. It just looks really good. And, um, yeah. So Hera. Uh, she's, she basically, uh, says, okay, I'm going to go where we're, I'm leaving. And, uh, I'm I love go she's reached the point by the way, in the, in the Alliance where she has absolute authority to do whatever the hell she wants and nobody cares. <laughs> well, she's just yeah. like, she's like, I'm a general, you know, that, and so she let's has just a lot go. of political capital that she can burn. Well, yeah, po- yeah, absolutely. Yeah, she verbally smacked that senator. She was like, she yeah, did not she did. care. She was. You don't know like, that. <laughs> well, she was like, and what were you doing during the war? Yeah. Oh yes, oh, yes. But that loved that. I wanted to talk about that line, like, um, 
a, a lot of us didn't have the luxury of setting it out and saw and seeing who won, mm. which that is the problem of the new Republic is because you, a lot of the people who, who were a lot of the people basically did that. Not, not every member of the new Republic is a hero right. of the rebellion. But and you, go ahead. You know, it's, um, it, it's, and to uh, follow me on this comparison because they're definitely not the same. Okay. But the problem is, is that after a, after a conflict in a struggle and a rebellion like this happens and a new government is formed, the problem is, is not, you have two problems. One, you have a problem of who you're going forward with, and then you have the problem of who you're not bringing forward with you. And Saul Guerrero is a good example of someone who could not transition forward. He was always going to be a problem going forward, even in the new regime, because he he just became too much of a, uh, you know, uh, a revolutionist. And he was a, he became a liability himself. Yes. Yeah. And Hera, I'm not saying is at that point, but you can see through her um, her obstinance and her own you know, stubbornness to do what she wants. This is somebody whom could become a problem for the, for the new Republic going forward. Someone who's not falling in line with what they want to do. She's doing what her, her, you know, so people like this are a possible problem for the new Republic. Well, it's a little, I was going to say, they're going to be a little bit upset when they find out that she lost three X wings and three pilots. Well, well, you know, but Hera does. Carson made it though. Yeah, That's Carson right. made it. Um, yeah. He doesn't have plot armor, but he might as well have. Um, <laughs> so Hera has an advantage, though, in that she has a relationship with Mon Mothma. Uh, and, and in Rogue One, Mon Mothma says uh, Sagarera's militancy makes him, uh, you know, makes everyone uncomfortable. And But Hera, in the Rebel show, even... Mon Mothma and Hera interact several times and they, they have a friendship. Yes. She's and, allies and even, in high places. Even this, in this scene, she's like, Oh, she starts with the, Oh, how is, how's your son doing? You mm-hmm. know, it's, it's very personable. So I think Hera might, she, she gets a, a longer leash say yes. than Saul Guerrero would. Yeah. But you could see even in that conversation, it wasn't Mon Mothma who had the last word. And, yeah. you know, so her, her leash may be long, but she's still leashed, but yeah. And, but it, yeah. it does go, it does go sideways. And, uh, I'd like to say, uh, it was great to see the ghost in the ship, the Harris ship, uh, Lindsay, this was a, the ghost was basically our home and rebels, like oh. for, for all five seasons, yes. this was the ship mm-hmm. where that that's where we spent most of our time. So it's almost uh, like today, if you took like and today, the Haslab campaign for the ghost ends fully backed. And ready so Brian has spent hundreds of dollars on a a ghost toy, <laughs> oh. which is um, amazing. No, it was such no, a that, big no, part would, of that show. I mean, yeah, and it's no, huge. Yeah, I and the ghost is a great ship. It's it has its own characteristics, yeah. and and it was really. I mean, we saw it for like two seconds. It was in Rogue One. Uh, but now we're getting these great hero shots of it flying around in live action. It's, so almost, it's almost like of... they took the Millennium Falcon and the Serenity from Firefly and made it made yes. it into a ship. Yeah, exactly. Nice. Um, but uh, the Ghost, it was is really special to to see that ship. Um, and uh, also, again, you just put some X wing fighters in front of me. You can do whatever you want. I don't mm-hmm. care. I mean, just classic X wing fighters. Uh, we've got a Rodian pilot in there. Um, and of course, you know, like our friend Carson is back. Um, can I and, ask, uh, is it normal from the Rebels show for uh, her to bring her son into danger this way? He, he was at the end of the the very last yeah. episode. He, he wasn't uh, yeah, the last five yeah. minutes of the last episode. Yeah, okay, he, he okay. only appeared in I the was epilogue. Like, I was like, wow, he's like 12. I thought the same thing. When he was in the womb, she was putting him in danger. I I guess so. But I was (laughs) like, that was was. like during the Empire was like around now. Big she get a babysitter. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. And Mon Mothma. um, Yeah. Hey, you want to watch Jason while I go out and blow up a few X-Wings? 
No, but she, um, I kind of like it, especially if she's going to train him to be like, he's got to, you know, learn. He like, he like sure. takes him into hyperspace. I like that he's doing that. I think that's great. She's teaching him. But I was like, okay. Okay. Well, Bring I mean, of course, okay. and it's, it's every kid's dream to be, you know, flying into space. You know, she even lets him pull down the, uh, the hyperspace yeah. levers. And of course, we still got Chopper there, just like mark, 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 what a thrill mark, for that kid that was playing Jason. <gasps> I know, you know, to be able to reach up there and pull that lever down. I mean, yeah, that's, that's the funnest part of the ride at uh, Disney. Yeah, um, I've still never been able to do that. So uh, <laughs> we're seeing a lot of good scenes in Episode Four with Morgan and Balin together, also. Yes. And I have to put it out there: one thing I I was thinking of towards the end of Episode Four was. I'm not, even though it makes sense in the plot, I'm not sold yet that Morgan is completely doing this to bring Thrawn back. Hmm. I think there might be other motivations. Bring all oh. the witches of Dothamir back. I don't know. Uh, I mean, the Eye wow. of Sion <laughs> mm -hmm. is theorized to be named after Darth Sion, who was um, an undead, almost kind of, Sith Lord who died but refused to let himself die and he was quite a powerful Sith and Dave Filoni is one for bringing all kinds of canon together so Scion can't be a coincidence that they named it this um, so I'm not entirely sold that that's her only motivation for doing this I think there's something on the other side that might be um, mm -hmm. her motivation as well we'll see yeah. which by that's the way cool. speaking of canon Dave Filoni has officially Put heir to the empire on the board as canon. Oh. What just having having Ahsoka say it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Which, yeah, that was the uh, that was the the name of the novel that sort of relaunched Star Wars. I thought Wars. you meant like he was like the novel's canon. No, no, <laughs> I, we are following a similar trajectory to that book, but there's a lot of differences. But yeah, um, I think the broad strokes, a lot of the broad strokes, are very similar. But it's. When we uh we we catch up with our heroes at the beginning of this episode, mm -hmm. uh, you know we said they're fixing up the ghost and um not the ghost they, the fix up Ahsoka oh, ship. the Ahsoka ship yeah what uh, does that ship have a name I wonder I guess home. it's called home they, it's <laughs> the it's the unnecessary rotating wing ship oh come on <laughs> uh, the, the, that that could describe a bunch of ships in Star Wars actually. I just go um, with, I mean, it may not be named that, but Fulcrum is just what I go with, even though that's kind well, of... Yeah, kind of Fulcrum, code. which they bring in to this episode. The Fulcrum, yeah. of course, was from uh, Rebels. That's what Ahsoka's code name was. Yeah. That when the Rebels were working with her. So, David Tennant ah. gets, um, he gets, he gets just beat the one up. That your gut, the one that your gut is telling you to say, don't say that one. Who Yang? Who Yang? <laughs> um... <laughs> So um, I thought it was cool when he got into the fight with the droid, he engaged his like his training arms and was yeah. like, like um, holding him at bay. And uh, he held I his own pretty funny. well. Yeah, <laughs> it was a great. I loved all of that. But I did have a moment. I was like, why are like droids like punching each other? I thought that too. I'm like, That's <laughs> like they odd... don't need to punch each other. Yeah, that it was rock'em sock'em robots. For <laughs> yeah, a minute. yeah. yeah. It was like, because <laughs> who Yang looks sort of like a Rock'em Sock'em robot. Yeah, right? you, you might like be onto something punches. there. But also, I, I would expect when I when I went out there, or, or when who 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 Yang went out there and sort of scanned the perimeter, he doesn't see any of these people. And Ahsoka's like <laughs> watch, like she senses something. Like, it's very obvious, careful. and they still don't like lay down lay down a perimeter. They've got to have, like, I don't know, perimeter beacons or some You're, shit. Listen, she is a seasoned Clone War veteran who's seen countless battles. She should have known better. Well, she should have known was, better. Maybe was that was her they... first walk outside. Or at least go just stay out there with him. And right, then... she's just like, good luck. There's some yeah, shit going like, on here, but hey, I'm going to go get some coffee. Yeah. Hey, 2,000-year-old yeah. robot, come over here, and I'm sure you'll be fine. <laughs> but anyway, we do have uh, we do have a battle. Yeah. Um, which, by the and, way, we uh, see Sabine finally, finally the helmet become yeah, which... the badass that she was in the show, instead oh, of like man, always messing everything up and not being and able to do anything. We find out again, uh, like, uh, like in the Mandalorian, the only time the bad guys are accurate are when they're shooting at Beskar. 
(laughs) 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 Yep. Sabine takes a few shots. And, um, but, uh, yeah, it was cool to see her in the helmet. Um, it was cool to see her fight with someone with a lightsaber. Like that, them as a duo was very cool. Yeah. And that's kind of, that's how she was in the show. I mean, she, she had a jet pack in the show though, and she doesn't have one here, which I thought would have been helpful when they're running through the woods and Ahsoka's like, just like, and (laughs) Sabine is like, oh, where's my jet pack? Yeah. But, um, (laughs) So after this little scene, um, is this where uh, Shin and Merrick sort of yes. head yeah. them off? Hmm. So, um, and so, okay, uh, Sabine gets she gets thrown against a tree and pop off goes her helmet. So what, that, what kind of helmet is that? I was like, I man, it's not strapped on tight enough. She'd be bad helmet. sent to the sidelines for a little bit. With man, that I tell you what, speaking of trees, by the way, we lost a lot of trees in episode four. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the tree hugging were... hippies are going to be upset about that. <laughs> they were just slicing and dicing. That was sort of like uh, in the um, in the uh, the Force Awakens. They did that with when Ray and yeah. Kylo were fighting. They were chopping mm-hmm. down trees. Um, uh, by the way, um, Ahsoka's lightsaber, and you know, I maybe I, I hadn't noticed it before in the other episodes. Maybe I, I didn't notice it, but like her lightsaber's hum is much. It's different. It's a much yeah. different sound than the other sabers. It has almost like a singing, like it sounds light, cool. It's like a light, crisp yes. hum to it mm-hmm. versus like the heavier, bassier well, lightsaber. When, wah, when when is much it, crisper, it, especially when she fights Balin later on. Ah, you know, there's there's a the definitely so good. The uh, you can hear the difference in the sound design. Yeah, because Balin cool. sounds, you know, very. That's, that's the best lightsabers have ever sounded, to me. Well, yeah, oh, that scene. In that scene. Amazing. So, so let's go back. Go back to the forest fight. Okay, so um, <laughs> so Sabine gets gets thrown against the tree and her helmet falls off. Which Bonk. I tell you what, that would have ruined Din Djarin's day. Yeah, yeah, he'd uh, have been like, now back to the pool. Okay. Back um, to the pool. That's such a good point. You can join when you get back to the pool. He straps like, his helmet on a little tighter. Yeah, he's like, okay. Um, but <laughs> um, so so with Merrick, and I, I think I heard uh, a million uh, Star Wars nerds scream out in terror when this happened. And uh, Merrick just uh, Merrick obviously is a product of some sort of night sister. Yes, he was um, a resurrected um inquisitor inquisitor from the that morgan has resurrected which kind of like one of those like sith apparitions you know from rise of skywalker at the end you know all those the sith around palpatine and that arena mm-hmm. well and it, this, it seems something like that i, I but, think yeah resurrected yeah because when he when he was cut down obviously this plume of green mist fl- went out of his armor and this green mist uh is from i mean we've seen it when anytime the in the clone wars when the witches of dathomir were around uh like when uh when darth maul was being sort of reanimated that this green mist was like everywhere and um, the savage oppressed they did savage his brother yeah same thing so i think i definitely think that's what uh, we were we we're meant to believe that he was he was a puppet of the night sisters and you know what i think if it had been like star killer it probably would have been too they probably would have had to give it too much focus yeah and although this is kind of a i'm not disappointed because everyone wanted it to be something else this is probably the neatest way out of it Agree. Keep the, keep the show moving. I mean, it, it, and that's just the, the curse of, you know, Star Wars fans and you know fandom in general wanting is to, that wanting to see something. You, you just always yeah. are assigning a more importance to something than it actually has. Right. Speaking of that, in that fight, I swear I noticed. I had to look up what it was called. I didn't just know this, but I, I remember reading <laughs> about it or seeing something with probably with Jedi Survivor in that fight. At some point, doesn't Ahsoka. When she's like this with her lightsaber, she turns it off and like to like clear it and then turns it back on. Oh, when she goes through his. She turns it off to like to get out of the like lock with him and then turns her lightsaber back. Oh, really? Oh, does she? I swear she does. 
I swear she does. And I was like, I've heard of this and it's called Tricotta and it's frowned upon for Jedi to do it. They're not an set. They don't do it. <laughs> it's considered oh, so dishonorable. To turn off your lightsaber to to, to like to... get out of a like interesting. Yeah. Yes. Oh. So I swear I saw her do that. Mm, I, was like, wow, I have to watch I have to watch again. I've heard of this. Anyway, so well she's wow. one to uh, bend the rules. Bring that up. So. I know I yep. like that. I thought that was a real that was a really good thing for her to do as someone who's like rejected the jedi innocent. hey look following the rules led cool. the jedi to ruin so yeah you know, <laughs> yeah um, good on her also on... they should all do it more frankly it it i feel like it gets you out of a lot of the stuff oh i can well, do this okay. oh well Just well also that could backfire on you tragically yes. Yes. yeah whereas the, the, person, the, bond. the person coming down on you would just yeah. slice you in half i feel like she does it with that guy because she's obviously like she's toying with him like he she doesn't barely need to do any she only uses her one lightsaber fighting with well, him. and like, and, she, and she does she, that later she just but, kills him in one stroke too yeah like she yeah. so i feel like with more experienced <laughs> fighters you wouldn't want to do that yeah, yeah. I mean, she she gave obi she did the obi-wan darth maul finishing move well, like the one swipe. Well, yep, the the whoop. But um, and then but he, so, he puffed away, so he's gone. He's a dust bunny. So, yes, and then um, then they do the dumbest thing. Okay, which is me. she goes, go on without me, and I'm literally going. But we literally just had a whole scene about how you shouldn't do this. Yeah, a whole, don't do that. You two are better, better you when you <laughs> stay together. Just yes. my opinion. When you're well, together, you're better. We were just heard that, but from who Wang. Yeah, Huyang. and then they, the, and then they, and Huyang. like this, this apprentice kicks Sabine's ass, and yes. Ahsoka's like, I'm just gonna leave her again. When I could easily kill this girl, no yeah. problem. Well, I think, like, I think Sabine, she, she definitely held her own a little longer this time because she's, yeah. she's been having some training uh, since their first meeting. Uh, gone. It's not getting well, in she her was way totally anymore. unequipped the first time. She grabbed her lightsaber, and that's all she had. She didn't have any other little gadgets. Well, she, to this out. time she has her bag of Mandalorian tricks. Yep. And I appreciated and, like the redemption fight for Sabine. I just felt like I was like, really, just right after he just told you guys to start together. Right yeah. <laughs> well, you know, if they have to. But these are the things that have to happen I know. for the story I'm just to like, unfold. Oh my god! But so she um so sabine does acquit herself a little better she uses her gauntlets i like that she's blocking the saber um and she i like that she uses and then when we talked about the weird push but then uses her rockets to you know uh try to get herself out of that situation but then shin shin uses uh she uses like props to escape. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a Batman. Like, they're like a bad bat. I thought Batman. Yeah. So I thought <laughs> drops the smoke bombs. I'm like, I don't think I've ever seen like a dark side user use technology to escape mm -hmm. a situation. But uh, th so that was cool. Uh, but then we come to the to the big fight here at the end. Um, good conversation. Good dialogue between these two. Yeah. Oh so yeah. Great. We get Crash a little talking and everything. Mm -hmm. we get some backstory uh you know balen knew anakin knew of anakin knew of him but the whole um, order knew of anakin well that's true as he said <laughs> and um you know, your your master spoke so high anakin spoke so highly of you and i guess so, she's like oh really but, never even mentioned but it. Well, yeah <laughs> but it's interesting how he knows what became of anakin yes which goes if you live not, to see what he became, not public information, so um, probably not. not Luke talk about it, but I, I think he put it on the wire. You know, I think Dad, <laughs> aka DV, miss you. <laughs> well, I know. I I don't think it's something that's see at the barbecue that's widely known, but it, it seems to me that's something that Balin could have. Found it out. might fit with your theory that he escaped the purge. Like maybe, 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 tried maybe to he knew he escaped. God, I hope we get a good flashback. We gotta be so great with Balin. I want to see it back. You know, I loved it when he when they're fighting and she's kind of backed up against that rock with her leg, and he goes, "Your legacy and that of your masters is nothing but death and destruction." And you know it's. It's like you're tying her to him, 
you know, to, to Vader. To yeah, to Vader. But you know, I wonder what happened to Balin. Mm-hmm. I, I feel like something happened to him. He lost something because of them. I mean, somewhere again, you could go back to the Count Dooku realm is like is he really noble in his pursuit or is this a sith deception talking here and that's yeah. kind of like what i'm thinking of with Balin. i'm like the guy seems very um sympathetic and you mm-hmm. want to like him and you don't find him to be necessarily overly evil but is this the dark side talking right, right. now just to get what he wants done mm-hmm. but as we find out he does keep to his word about something like later on so the guy's got yeah. some honor code to him so yeah he's definitely honorable so far and he like and he has no there there's he has no love it doesn't seem like he has any love for for Darth Vader like mm-hmm. because of that of what he says um you know it's your your legacy and that of your master is the destruction and he's just man. like Ahsoka. he rejected the Sith Oh, what a shame! Yeah, Ray Stevenson, what a shame. Well, I know, but their fight I thought was good. I like him, you know, throwing the rock at her, and she, like, I like that kind of thing, like what Vader did to Luke, where he starts throwing crap at him in Cloud City and knocking him around. Yeah. But I like when they use their environment to mm-hmm. to fight. Yeah, and you know, it seems like they're two very different fighters. The two yes. Of them. He is yes. all, he is nothing but power. I mean, he is, he, you know, heavy he stroke after heavy stroke. Like he's using a broadsword. Yeah. And she's and it, like got a katana. Got a katana. Yeah. She's skill. He's, she's the skill, more, probably more skilled fighter. Mm-hmm. And he is just raw power. And it's interesting that she chooses not to use her second one again. I and think, I thought it's, I thought at some point she was going to bust it out, but then she burns her hand. That, she yeah. That she that. can't use it. Yeah. yeah, I think um, that was to combat his his more powerful stance. She needs two hands on that hill. Yeah, because she can't. She yeah, she needed true. two hands on the saber. That's a good point. Um, that, you, that could yeah, be it. I like that. But um, but then she wouldn't have been able to do it anyway because she pulls the Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> grabs <that> too. The, <laughs> grabs the the hot. He has the map. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you think she's gonna have it on her oh. hand? <laughs> I don't know. I'd be too too on the nose, but yeah. yeah. But you know, maybe I thought she that absorbed. Was... Maybe she like absorbed it, like threw it. Well, uh, something happened to her. But well, 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 there yeah. are okay. So what is happening during really? the fight? We so um, Morgan has already taken the shuttle back to the Ice Ion. She's on the the hyper ring, and the very cool droid monitoring the calculations <laughs> yeah, the, by yes. the way the countdown He's seeing symbols mm-hmm. start to um form now by the way these symbols we've seen before in rebels oh and if you look i think you see them again at the end of this episode in a different spot but oh. what the I symbols don't. on the the, the like readout to the wrong yes. place no um so <laughs> It, what, what is it? Explain this, yourself. Okay. Man. So the space between, what do they call that? It's the world it's between, between worlds. World, world between worlds, right? There is all kinds of, you know, uh, it's this ethereal place where you can walk and there's all kinds of things happening. The gates that you see have symbols around them in okay. the world between worlds. And it looked like that was the same symbols lighting up in a Stargate kind of form. Interesting. And, um, and at the end there, where she's with someone who won't be named just yet in the podcast, um, it looked like you could see some of those gates in the back, too, with the same types of symbols. So I think that's what's happening, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong, but it looked like the exact same symbols. Wow. Well, before any of that happens, um, yeah. uh, Balin gets the better. He, of he overpowers Ahsoka and she falls off the cliff. Well, not yet. Well, doesn't fall off yet. She has um her apprentice she Sabine, Sabine, show up. Sabine shows up. Well, Shin showed up, and she and, and then got uh, wrecked. Yeah, yeah, she got thrown into got a, a wall. Wrecked. Yeah, I think and, uh, Ahsoka channeled a little dark side with that. So mm-hmm. Ahsoka Possibly. then commands Sabine destroy the map, which Sabine does the most questionable thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Shoot herself yeah. right in the hand. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna blow my hand up when I. She's do this. holding well, 
the map like a thermal detonator with the blaster touching it. And I'm thinking, what are you going to blow your own hand off? But well, I, yeah, I think that was more performative, but I, yeah. I get and also yeah, she never she was never going to yeah, shoot that. Yeah, Balin knew he's like, there's no ever way she's going to blow her hand off. Balin, <laughs> it took Balin like a minute to kill that thing with the lightsaber. Yeah, I mean, it, it he had to hold his saber he, right through well, the thing. Let's get to that. Hold on. Okay. So we have a distraction. She's she's telling Sabine, destroy the map, destroy the map. Uh, obviously, Sabine's having a, a an existential crisis because she knows if she destroys the map, she's never going to see es- uh, um, Ezra again. Ezra. And uh, she she pauses and uh, Balin absolutely wrecks Ahsoka and knocks her off the cliff. Yes. And she falls to her whatever. Yeah. As we find out. Um and then we've got a great exchange between Sabine and Balin. Yes. Yeah. He's uh he's you know, he's he seems sympathetic to her. He's like, you know, if you come with he us does. willingly, you we're not you won't be hurt. He and you'll see story. your friend. Yeah. And you know, you'll see your friend again. And you know, Sabine pretty quickly hands hands it over to him and just says, Okay. Here it is. I was, I feel like maybe because I didn't watch Rebels, I was like, I was like, really? You're going to give this guy? Like, I was, now, did I really think she had much of a chance of getting away from him anyway? I When I started to think of it that way, I was like, okay, she's hedging her bets. Like, she's staying mm-hmm. alive. This guy's going to take it from her anyway. And mm-hmm. this is her only I chance. like that it's- angle. I yeah. like that angle. And we don't yeah. know what she's thinking. She may be thinking, exactly. well, maybe I can disrupt this later. Yes. I like that. That was the I like only that. way it made sense to me. Because otherwise, I was like, mm-hmm. what are you doing? Uh, and we see, yeah. as soon as she gives him the, the map, she instantly is in a chokehold from uh mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. she's uh, <laughs> yeah. Shin starts from Shin. So her. She's, she's in a rock and a hard place. You're right. I like that. I like that angle. I think that makes a lot of sense. Yes. And even though I don't know if that was their intention, I'd like to believe that because it puts a little, yeah. a little more I'll, thought into it. However, at the beginning of the episode where they do the, 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 the Lucasfilm logo and they go through the helmets, uh, Sabine's helmet was red in this, mm-hmm. which in the, in these intros, the good guys are blue. The bad guys are red. Sabine's helmet was red. At the Ooh. beginning of this episode, but her helmet is kind of red, though. I mean, ish. But it's it, yeah. Color in in the Rebels, past, yeah. it's been blue. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, she so, you, mean, you mean in the past, her helmet has been in the credits yeah. and has been blue? Yes. Oh. Uh, I have they been watching it. them. I've been skipping. Them. I haven't either. I, I did too. I skipped it too today. <laughs> they, they changed it to oh. red. I got to watch them. Oh, that time. interesting. Um, because it starts with Vader, and he's always red. And then they they keep going and uh, but anyway so oh. so Ahsoka and and she they do put her in handcuffs she she is in cuffs there when they get on the shuttle I mean, right. Sabine um, Sabine yes and uh, take her up to the to the ring you know, but she's that, but she's alive you know that yeah. whole yeah. that whole go back to that decision she makes from it it kind of reminded me of Anakin trying to save Padme. Or Luke trying to save his friends. It's like kind of difficult oh, choice. Like because, where, yeah, yeah, where she's, I'm choosing to save, try to save Ezra. Yes, and I think the part that frustrated me when I was like not before I thought like okay maybe she's realized this is really her only choice is, but like with Anna or with uh, Luke and his dad, like Luke was the only one in immediate danger. Like if he failed. A lot of people would be in danger, but like he was confident he was would succeed, and you're confident and he's going to succeed because he's Luke and he's the you know, he's the hero of the story. If they get this map and go get this guy, like this such a galactic war, and she it's her against all of them. I don't know. I don't but know if she, what's th- she going to do? But I think with they made it pretty clear that if Luke failed defeating vader and the emperor he was the only one that, that could. everything was lost so everything was on the line it made and it I seem felt more like, like you know i agree and i but i felt like we had earned the confidence in the movie that luke could do it well i don't i i, I, have, I, I haven't watched rebels so i maybe no. maybe you guys are more confident to being than me but i'm just like what could she possibly do well, I think Brian, I don't know if you were talking about this originally, but in Empire Strikes Back, when Luke cuts his training short right. to go help Han and Leia and Chewie, exactly. Cloud That's what City, I was referring to. Okay, where he's like, 
I, I got to go. And both Obi-Wan and Yoda are like, do not go right. because you're not ready. But he, he makes the emotional decision to go. And then they everybody has to end up rescuing Luke in the yep. end because he messes everything up. Yep. Mm -hmm. So um, and Han is still gone. Yes. And you know, it's <laughs> and yeah. he gets his hand cut off. You're and, right. You're right. So yep. but um but Sabine, I think I do like I do like your your guys' thoughts about she's just making this she's not thinking ahead. She's making this emotional decision to okay, well, if I could stay alive, I can maybe get to him. You know, not really thinking, you know, 10 steps forward, like, oh, man, this could go completely sideways. Yeah, just probably if I will. don't, just if I don't, if I don't do this, I'll die anyway, and I can't do anything. Exactly. At least this way, I'm still alive. Which, uh, you know, and of course, maybe, um, yeah, I mean, he, Balin would have killed her yeah. if she had, if she had. He just would have killed her and taken the map. I mean, at yeah. that yeah. point, that's that's what he was going to do. And it's not like she could have chucked the thing over the edge either, because he would have just grabbed it with the force. Exactly. Or, or shin would have been, <laughs> and it would have been like, oh well, well, I guess I'm screwed now. So Balin, uh, Shin, and Sabine get on the shuttle and go up to the uh, the Eye Which, of Sion. Great and... shot of the ring coming out of the atmosphere. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And we have beautiful. finally our. Uh, our other heroes arrive. The ghost of the X-Wings. And this is a hell of a great sequence right here. So oh, yeah. Morgan is alerted um, by her droid that there are there are combatants in the way of, of their trajectory. And she's like, I don't give a... Yeah, it, I mean, why <laughs> would she care? Ignore she's them. like, look, I mean, this thing's as big as a Death Star. I mean, what do I care about that? Yeah, and it's hollow in the middle. And, it, yeah, so, yeah. and it's <laughs> awesome because she's like, she punches it. And goes right over them. And, and they get caught in the wake, which so, is really interesting. That might awesome. have been one of the coolest hyperspace takeoffs I've ever seen. And I mean, that was just really cool. So the ghost gets um, uh, disabled or knocked out. And they lose like three X-Wings. I think yeah. Carson is the only three one. Three of the five, survived. yeah. Oh, okay, Carson and one other survived. I know the Rodian and the Black Man and I think the woman were killed they, they all they had a massive nasty yeah. collision yeah and, and which was obviously very well done and you know carson coming in lock ass foils in attack position yeah, yeah. Okay. but i love the again. shot after after it was already gone in the mm -hmm. distance you can see the hyperspace residue or or yeah. even yeah. it's still going because who knows it's just yeah. awesome it's like such a powerful hyperspace jump Yes. You could see it still going in the in the in the distance. Um but now so, Ahsoka's dead and okay. the show is over. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I, I want to ask Lindsay. Lindsay, um as our listeners know, uh you did not watch Clone Wars or Rebels. Nope. This may have been your first exposure to this strange celestial plane of existence mm -hmm. what were you what was your impressions what 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 did you think was going on here uh i was like well she's not dead she mm -hmm. can't be dead she's the star of the show so yeah. <laughs> and then i was like okay these purgles are here maybe they're also in the water because that's what i was thinking at first because it's i'm like i know they're in the clouds maybe they also go down into the water so wow. i thought maybe something happened there but then we're in the you know the space the space uh space super space highway i don't know what to call it what did you call it the world between worlds the world between worlds yes. i didn't know i was like okay so it's obviously some force some some from the force snatched her and put her in here safely i don't know yes that's about as much as i could think about okay is that well? What is that? It's that's okay. So in Rebels, the world between worlds is this higher plane of existence that exists in the Force. Um, okay, so where they, they get that off pretty well. Then it's accessible through various. I mean, only Jedi are supposedly able to access it, and you could access okay. it through different temples throughout the galaxy. Oh. And in one episode of Rebels, Palpatine 
was trying to gain control of this because if he gained control of this other dimension, then he, it would be completely game over. Like he would be able to basically destroy the universe Mm -hmm. if he, and, um, he almost got control of it. Um, but this is how in rebels, um, Ezra ends up here Mm -hmm. and he's kind of walking around and in, in the rebels. And I, I actually watched this episode after, right after I watched Ahsoka last night, which episode is it? It's a, uh, it's called, it's in episode, it's in the last season of Rebels. Season and four, the, the name of the episode is The World Between Worlds. Okay. And Ezra gets into the world between worlds. He doesn't know what's happening. He starts hearing all these voices from lines from the movies, oh. um, lines from uh, the Clone Wars, and um, even Kylo Ren's even in there talking oh. so he he doesn't know what's going on but he's there's these different doorways and in rebels in season two of rebels ahsoka fights darth vader amazing fight and it was assumed for a couple of years after this that this may have been where ahsoka died because vader lived and then for a couple of years we didn't hear nothing from ahsoka like they have oh. this duel and Vader is the one who walks out of this temple and Ahsoka never does. Well, while this battle's going on, Ezra sees it in this doorway. He sees what's happening. He's like, he recognizes this is an event he remembers from years ago. And he's like, whoa, that's Ahsoka and Darth Vader. Well, he basically grabs Ahsoka, pulls her out of normal time and space pulling her away from vader and saving her life okay and and she's like um and if and so they both have this conversation about what what is this place what what, you know nobody anyway it there is some exclamation that happens in the show but um ezra's like you know he tell he tries to fill her in on everything that's happened since she's disappeared and she's like, okay, well, I can't, I can't go with you. I have to go back to where I belong. And, but she goes back to the temple after Vader. Cause as far as Vader's concerned, she disappears and he doesn't know what happened to her. So mm-hmm. he, he leaves. So she goes back to the temple after he leaves. And that is how she survived it's it's i'm I'm not explaining it very well and it seems really okay. it seems really weird so um it does seem weird but i think you're explaining it well so what i want to know is is there any more about this place other than that what do you what do you think Lindsay? the only way they show people getting in is through these temples yeah this is a complete weird mm-hmm. thing but the planet does have some weird connections to the force i think True. but that said how does ezra get out he just leaves through. He, he leaves through a, a doorway. Now, maybe there's some kind of Sith connection to the thing. Maybe it's a who knows how she gets in, which is, I think, completely strange. I'm sure we'll find out. But yeah. I'm going to put the question out. Is this a cheat code for the show? Now, to, and I'll put it this way. So we kind of find ASX, out. Sex world between worlds. In Rebels. Yeah. Uh, by the way, this finally say it. Who does she see in the world between worlds? Hayden Christensen, a very de-aged Hayden Christensen. Yeah, this yeah. was my comment from earlier about Obi Wan. They could de-age him for this, but not that. Okay, that that just shows me that Obi Wan was shoddily run. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like like okay, so that um, they didn't so, even need to de-age him for no, this. So Anakin right. is the forty-year-old Padawan, <laughs> uh, and, but in here he looks basically just like he did in Revenge of the Sith. Yeah, he, he, he knows his right. scars all gone. Yeah, he's no scarred. Here's what I think. I think, and maybe this is going to be blown out. Maybe this place is where Force ghosts reside, and that's why they show up where they do. Um, that they sort of have this 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 very 
overarching holistic view of time and space. They're in their own and, tesseract there. Yeah, like something this. like that. I like that. this. Um, and, you know, Anakin says, well, at first he says, uh, hello, Snips, which Snips was his nickname for Ahsoka in the Clone Wars when she was uh, very young. And and it's really neat to to have these two characters interacting in live action. I mean, she's older than yeah. by 20 years what he was at that point. Um, yes. Okay, so let me explain. Let me put this out there as, as my cheat code. Because in the show, The World Between Worlds with Ezra was showing him portals and gates of where he was kind of had connections to. So yes. where he could go. So the fact that Sabine has now traveled to the next galaxy, okay? Yes. Um, is she, Ahsoka, in the World Between Worlds going to be able to see a portal with a, with a Sabine like, now in a new place and be able to use a portal to step into the other galaxy versus having to be in the regular world and find a way or wait. Or, so, or Ezra, right? She could find Ezra. Uh, or Ezra, maybe. Yeah, right? So I think that's how she's going to bypass the Well, yeah. The, 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 fact that she, a map. the fact that she got left behind by the hyperspace. Yeah. Right? So that's how she's going to get there in the right place. Now, how they explain how she got into the world between worlds, I'm interested to see. Uh, I'm obviously fascinated I, to see what kind of interaction her and, and maybe Anna there's can an have. underwater temple. Maybe so. Well, maybe well, maybe that thing that they're they they had the map in. Maybe that's the top of a temple. Could be. And there's some bottom there that she fell into. Or maybe you'll know. see like they'll do a nice shot of her interacting with Anakin, and then they'll like snap out and do like a nice pull, and you'll see her like on a rock in the ocean bleeding oh, out, gosh. and that's all oh, her well. head. <laughs> but that's that's what I was gonna say is that he says I didn't expect to see you here so soon. That did make me think. Oh, yeah. did she? Did she like, die? Is she dead? Uh, but I was like, she can't be dead. She, she's well, dead. I, I don't know. And so she's a force I'm, ghost. The rest of the show. Yeah, I know, right? I am. By I am wait, really hold on, Jared. Curious. Jared, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Right. Hold on. Wait, wait. Hold. Put a pin in. Curious. Force ghosts. By the way, when I first saw Anakin, I don't know why it popped in my head, but it looked like uh, the ghost that appeared, the force ghost of Anakin, that you saw at the end of Jedi in the remaster. And I don't know why my brain went to this, but it made me laugh because I saw like a meme like a while ago. And <laughs> you guys, this is completely off the subject of the show. This is Return of the Jedi. You know, at the end of Jedi, the Ewoks are doing drums on the Stormtrooper helmets and stuff, right? Sure. You know, those Ewoks ate every one of those Stormtroopers. <laughs> I mean, think about the horror that the stormtrooper oh. lore of the survivors that were grabbed by the Ewoks brought back to the village to be roasted alive and eaten. They ate all those, <laughs> all the dead and the well, living. They ate them all. Well, well, they didn't, they were going to roast guys. Han Solo. Well, they were, but <laughs> they, they eat didn't eat the people. good guys. They well, eat people. they eat people. They tried. They ate those stormtroopers. Anyways, that's, I, that's back, I, feel back, like, I feel like that tracks. Oh, back to, back to being curious, Jer uh, Jared. Um, so, well, I mean, I think it's canon now with Ewok hunts in the uh, oh, Battlefront Battle Two Front. game. Yeah, yeah. The Ewoks, man, they 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 don't play. No, they, they, they will don't. kill you dead, and it's <laughs> yeah, the, the scariest dang thing you've ever done. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, that's a whole other show. But there's a mode called Ewok Hunt, and you're a stormtrooper at night on Endor, <laughs> and it is scary as crap. Really, yep. I have to play that mode. <laughs> Yes, turn yes. it on. It's ridiculously frightening. Um, so anyway, um, I, I just I'm really curious about the next week because I think I think we're gonna get they're gonna take some big swings next week, and they're gonna talk about things I think that we've been wondering about, uh, maybe about just the nature of uh, the force, um. But I think it's uh, uh oh, are there oh, some Ewoks in your apartment? Just weird. Ah, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> <What's>... <laughs> I think. Oh my god! What happened? I think my cat was snoring. Oh, <laughs> it's literally never happened before. I'm sorry. It was the weird. Man. I was like, "What the fuck? So Is she dying? Like, what the fuck is so going on over there?" 
So your cat's as as bored by this podcast as. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, oh, come sorry, on. sorry, come sorry. on. She freaked me out. Sorry, um, I was like, I thought I was like, is that coming from me? my house? <laughs> we... <sighs> it was. I've never heard a. Have you ever heard a cat snore? No, I haven't. Yeah, it's weird. Sorry. Wow, that's okay. Next week, but, big swings. <laughs> but yeah, I think next week we're, we're gonna. I think it's going to be uh, one for the books. I was really and excited to see Anakin. I, I, like, I, I am hell too. I'm, yeah. It's uh, that is just kind of a touchstone back to, um, you know, to, to the, to the movies and, you know, any, anything like that is going to grab my attention immediately. Mm-hmm. And I think and, it speaks to how much rebel or clone wars and rebels made Anakin a better character for all the Star Wars fans. And I didn't even watch it. I just know that like his character obviously was really well liked in that show. Mm-hmm. And Hayden Christensen, we've talked about this like a million times and other stuff we've done, but like he's, ha- I feel like having kind of a comeback for this character yeah. that he played that was kind of hated. Yeah. Well, for and, a lot, not and, to his, and, you know, his fault, but and I feel like this is part of that all sort of his uh, redemption tour. Yeah. yeah. Which, you know, I, I, um, uh... I'm glad because I think uh, I think it's good for Hayden to have some redemption. And, and I, think uh, I, I saw something that was like or read or I forget I've seen it a few places, but basically like kids who enjoyed those movies, like obviously weren't on the Internet at that time. So you, you, you kind of only heard like old school fans who kind of were hating on it. And that's all yeah. they heard. And now all these kids are adults and we're like, those were my Star Wars movies. Sure. Like, I love this guy. And they're getting yeah. a little bit of that delayed love from the fans. That they didn't no, get. Great. absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, I think, I, and I think uh, a programming note here, I think, uh, you know, not a hundred percent, but if, uh, if we feel that it warrants it, I think we'll be dropping another Ahsoka archives episode next week after episode five airs, because I think, I think it's going to be a big, and I don't know if you've seen, I saw on Facebook today, they are doing theatrical screenings what? of, of yeah. episode five. Y'all got one in Orlando I close by. That. Well, that's a big <gasps> hint right there. Yes. So, so oh I God. think, um, yeah, I think that it's going to be a big deal. Yeah. Uh, the one in, the one in Orlando. not going to talk about it at work. The one in Orlando is, um, is already sold out, by the way. You know, oh, that, wow. tells you, that tells you a lot. So, yeah, it tells you a lot. All right. Well, gang, I think we should uh, we should exit the world between worlds for another week, as we uh, <laughs> as we ponder and and wonder and speculate about what all this Anakin business means uh, for Ahsoka in the next seven days. But uh, we're gonna be here breaking it down for you on the hyperspace, the Ahsoka archives, and uh, we want everybody to come back here next week. And until then, may the force be with you. And we'll see you next time. You know you can't live without this content. So subscribe to The Hyperspace, podcasting in the 25th century. Follow us on social media, leave us a review, and join us next time as we take you into the 25th century.